everybody. Good morning and happy St. Patrick's Day. I hope you are all well. Um, welcome to any new subscribers that have recently joined our channel. You're very, very welcome here and hi again to all friends. So for the last couple of videos uh, through March, I've been working on a small collaboration with Rose from Journals in Time and we are celebrating St. Patrick's Day. Now, St. Patrick's Day is obviously um, a day that is celebrated in Ireland and uh, actually throughout many places in the world, predominantly in America as well. Um, St. Patrick is the patron saint of Ireland. Okay, Rachel, you may say, so why are you working on something to do with St. Patrick? Well, actually, let me tell you a little known fact. Well, I say fact, it's probably perhaps more uh, legend than anything else. Nobody really knows, but there is actually um, a, a, a myth or maybe a, a tale that actually St. Patrick was born in Wales. So we the Welsh, we just love to adopt anything that is Welsh or anything to do with Wales. Um, so on this occasion, we're going to adopt St. Patrick. Actually, I'm quite fond of St. Patrick. Um, myself and my partner are a big fan of um, Dublin Island. We've been there several times and every time we go, we always visit St. Patrick's Cathedral. Hence how I happen to have one of these on my desk. So what are we going to do for today's project? Well, today's going to be a little bit different to um, the last couple of videos that we've done because in the last few, we have kind of set each other a challenge and then the other has done, um, you know, what the other one kind of set out. So um, if you remember with Rose's first video, she showed you lots of different ways to make faux stained glass windows. Um, I then used the stained glass windows to make some projects. So we made this lovely little, you know, uh, pocket notebook thing. And then we did uh, an envelope and then there was another one, a vellum envelope there. So again, if you haven't seen these videos, go back and check them out. Um, and then obviously for my video, I did the Celtic crosses where I showed you different ways to make Celtic crosses. Um, actually did a bit of hand stitching for that and then I made this lovely um, envelope tuck thing using Rose's beautiful kit which is called Echoes of Ireland. So if you are interested in purchasing her kit go back to the first video because there was a discount code there in the description box. There was also a giveaway uh, competition thing for the last four videos so again if you haven't heard about that go back to Rose's first video and check those out so I'm just going to move these items out the way here because this is what I've done that was a little reminder for you all so what are we doing today well today for the last video we decided to celebrate St Patrick's Day we're both going to do a video today so if you haven't yet seen Rose's make sure you go and check out her video um, and we set each other two words um, and together we're putting those words together to then create something so the words were Oh, I should have written this down, I hope I remember them right now. Notebook, uh, lace, blessings and harp. And by harp, we mean harp, as in an Irish harp. Now, why have I got Guinness on my desk? You may say, well, for a very good reason. I've actually got my Guinness t-shirt on today just to celebrate St. Paddy's Day himself. But Guinness use the harp as their emblem. So you may see me feature that some way in my project today but I've got these few bits and pieces this is from my my um, travel journal that I've been working on um, from our holiday to Ireland last year and obviously I kept lots and lots of pieces of ephemera like this um, to use in that so I may incorporate some of that today I've also got lots of elements left over from Rose's beautiful kit and I've also got some of these very beautiful um, little charms i'm going to call them but they call them medals that i actually bought in saint patrick's cathedral so i want to incorporate ooh, if i can pick one up one of these today as well so that there is a little emblem with saint patrick himself on so i'm going to pop that there just so i don't forget to utilize that now i have no plan well i kind of have a plan but um i haven't done a, a demo of this i'm just literally winging this today because i think it's more exciting when we wing it um it could all go wrong oh i'm sure it won't um but let's get started so for a notebook the idea that i had was to create something that could go into the journal and that will sit over the top of um, a journal page but you can take it out work on it and do all kinds of things with it like that so you'll kind of see as we go along but basically what you'll need is um, a section of cardstock and I will give you the measurements now that I have in front of me here oh I can just pick up my ruler again struggling from no nails um, right so obviously I've left it at um, 
12 inches. I haven't touched the length. Um, I have literally, oh, I've got two inches, I'm not centimetres. Um, and I've cut that down. It's now sitting at four and a half inches. And if you'd like that in centimetres, it is just over 10 and a half centimetres. So I haven't specifically measured this in any way. I kind of just eyeballed it by putting it onto the page in my journal because I'm going to want this to flip over and sit on there. So we're going to build it up, develop it, see what we can add to it. And I need obviously to incorporate those four elements. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is to fold my um, cardstock um, into the length that I feel is going to be required for it to fit onto um, my journal page. So let me just flatten that down a little bit. So what have I got here? Right, I've got a, a insert of a traveller's notebook here that I've been working on. But again, just to show you how I've worked out my depth, um, it's going to sit like that because that actually will fit in a traveller's notebook as well. But at least now it's not kind of, you know, it's not sitting lower than the page. So I folded it so that it now sits at 18 centimetres long or seven and a bit inches. And then the other side is um, just short of five inches or centimetres, just over 12 centimetres. So, you know, you can kind of see what I've done there. It's, you know, kind of almost a, oh, it's not even two thirds, is it? But basically measure it to the measurements of your page that you're going to flip it over, all right? So that you can, um, fit it into your uh, journal. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do now, that, that's going to be like the outer part of the notebook. So the next thing that we need to do now, this is a great way to use up some scraps, okay? So I've literally just grabbed um, a pile of different scrap papers that I've got lying about. Um, I've got some pages here from um, a journal that I've been working with, with Rose's kit. I've got um, some coffee dye papers, I've got some tea dye papers, I've got some green paper, um, all sorts of different bits and pieces here as well. So first thing that I'm going to do is take anything that is of an A4 shape and I'm going to fold it in half. Um, and the reason for which I'm doing that is because then we can slice it in half then, um, but it will then be form part of the papers that are going to go inside here. Now, I'm only going to put notebook paper on this length here because on the back we're going to put um, a pocket um, and obviously with this flipping over the page we don't need the pages to go or I don't want my pages to go over both sides you could have them go both ways so you know you could take a, a whole sheet and then just fold it in half and then stitch that in but um, I'm not going to do it like that I'm going to do it so that they fit uh, just here so we will need to cut these pages down but the first thing I'm going to do is just pick all of my pages um, and then we will cut into shapes. So that's all our papers um, cut there now. Um, I've done them at different length sizes, um, some that are folded over at the top. Um, so I'm just going to kind of put that kind of notebook book thing um, together now so that it sits um, inside of our journal. Oh, not journal, our notebook, sorry. Um, it's okay to have them all different shapes and sizes and lengths. Um, but just make sure that they all butt up to the top. So if one's shorter than the other, that's fine. But because we're going to be attaching it at the top, they all need to at least meet there, if that makes sense. Um, so we'll pop that one on the front. Just up that bit there, I think, because that's rather lovely, isn't it? That pattern. Um, I'm going to have that there. Um, let's perhaps put 
that one in then. And the top. Again, just to add a little bit of interest. And then perhaps we'll pop that one then over the top of there. I love um I love little notebooks like this that are, you know, where the pages are all kind of haphazard and there's a bit of everything in there and it's I don't know, I just think it adds lots and lots of interest to uh to whatever you're working on, doesn't it? So okay, let's just pop those over the top. Um maybe we'll start with that way. And then we'll pop that one halfway in. And then maybe we'll pop one of these in there. It might be a bit long actually that one. I'll have to have a look now. I'm gonna pop that one in there. So let's just check out now if that fits under there. Oh it does fit. No, that'll be alright, that's fine. I don't know whether this is gonna be a bit bulky, but there is only one way to find out, really, isn't there? And that's to just stitch it and, and stitch it and see, as I say. Um but, you know, I want it to be a good size notebook, otherwise there's no point, is there? You know, we need to be able to use plenty of bits of paper out of it. So, yeah, okay, I'm just going to go and... Actually, I'm not. I'm not going to stitch that in place yet, because I think it'd be easier to work on our pocket first, and we'll stitch that in last, because then I'm not going to have to keep flipping that um, out of the way. If that makes sense. Um... Yeah, okay, so we'll come back to that in a second. So the next thing that I'm gonna to wanna to do, first of all, before we do anything, let's just ink our edges, because otherwise that's gonna be something I forget to do, isn't it? And then I'll be like, ah, I forgot to ink. Travesty, oh no. Okay. Um, I also think I'm gonna round the edges off. So let's do that first too. Oh, that just makes it look a little bit more notebooky, doesn't it? And a little bit less like a bookmark. There we go. So let's just get a bit of ink down there. On the edge. There comes a point in every project, if you're going to be inking, when you have to stop and think, ah, I need to ink. And um, as much as I know it drives everybody daft listening to and watching us do it, if we don't ever show that we ink, people will forget that you've got to ink. <gasps> Because it's quite crucial with some projects, isn't it? And it's something that you don't necessarily want to leave until the end. Okay, right. So let's have a little look now at um, what we're going to add to this. So as I was saying, I'd like to put um, a pocket into this. Um, and I actually was quite tempted to use this as the pocket. Um, but I'm just wondering if this is going to be a little bit cumbersome. So what I may do is use one of the pockets out of the kit, perhaps add that into the into place and then we can always pop this in then if we want to as an emblem um, or a piece of ephemera so again let me just pop a bit of ink on there um, now you can pop in any pocket shape that you want you know it's entirely up to you how you do that um i'm do you know what i'm thinking we could get a second pocket of some kind here because that just seems like an awful lot of space there where we could really be utilizing um let's have a look what have i got here Hmm, that's quite an interesting shape as well, isn't it? I wonder if we could do something with that. Right, let's have a little look then. Let's have a good think about how we can layer this up because we sometimes limit ourselves, I think, when it comes to pockets and tuck spot spaces. And I'm really trying very hard to work here with what I've got on my desk um, because I want to be able to utilise up um, things that I've got left over from the kit. Do you know what? I'm trying to lift my arm. My shoulders are absolutely killing me today um i went back to um i joined a zumba class this week um for well thankfully to my sister i gotta say uh, to, to blame for that or i'd rather i got to thank for that today i feel it's to blame for that that's the tone because my shoulders are killing me she does this one dance um the instructor where um you have to stand with your arms outstretched for the whole of a song which is usually on average about three minutes um, and do all these different arm exercises oh my goodness have you ever tried keeping your arms out for three minutes and you know moving them in and out and up and down well it's obviously to work our shoulders and our um uh arm muscles but oh my gosh my shoulders are killing me today and my knees <laughs> and my shins <laughs> 
Well, I must have looked miserable this morning because my oldest actually offered to drop my youngest to school on his way to work. So I was like, <laughs> you know, when the kids are stepping in and helping out, you think, oh my gosh, I must look terrible. Because they just don't take any notice otherwise, normally to their boys. They're like, ah, mum's all right, she can just crack on. But yeah, I was uh, I'm feeling a bit delicate this morning, let's put it mildly. So yeah, my goodness. But all good fun. It's nice to be back out doing something normal, as we say. Right, so I'm thinking, if we pop that one there and that one there, I wonder if we can then have another pocket then behind, and then maybe another pocket then behind. What do you think about that? Because if we don't try, we'll never know, will we? Now, the next question is, can we put anything in these wonderful pockets? So... I might have the curly bits sticking out because I quite like that as well. Um, so we've got bits of ephemera here. Let's just check if these pockets going to work. Well, yeah, that works fine. I think we've got access to everything there. Yeah, I quite like that. It's a little bit different. Let's not be afraid of different. I'm going to stitch around these and I'm going to just stick these into place. So I will be back now. Okay, so what I've done now, guys, is I have stitched around um, the actual notebook cover. And I have taken the two notebook signatures that I put together and I've put them on a piece of um, just some scrap linen I had. I have stitched then um, through the centre. So you need to make sure that every piece of paper that's in there has slightly folds over the top. I've stitched them then to one bit to the front part. I've left a nice big gap in between and then I've stitched that one then again to the middle bit. So in the sense, if you can see, I've got two signatures there almost like instead of it being like a journal it's now going to be and what i'm now going to do is i'm going to bind this top bit to the inside of here because that will then give me flexibility within my little notebook to be able to um you know flip things back and forth rather than if i was just to stitch them all across the top um it wouldn't move would it so um i'm just going to make sure that that is on the center line there and it's isn't falling too low below. No, I think that's okay. And I'm just gonna now do some little holes and do some binding. So bear with me a second. Try and make sure that that's on the middle of my notebook. So we've got one there and one there. And then I'm just gonna take my needle through Bring it back through the other side. There we go, nice and simple, nothing too complicated there. And I'm going to do my bow on the inside so that the outside is kept nice and neat and tidy because it'll be um, obviously sitting on top of a journal page. So hopefully that will work now. So there we go, nice and tidy there. And then inside you can see we've got our notebook here. And then we've got our second notebook here. But more importantly, if I wanted to put it this side on the top of the page, I could do that as well. And I've got the flexibility to be able to do that. So the next thing I'm going to do now is add a pocket. I think we're going to put a little belly band on there. And then we're going to decorate the front and incorporate all of our elements. Okay, so on to the last bit now. We've, um, like I say, we've put the notebook together and now we're going to add some pockets to the back section just before the, we then look to decorate in the front. So I've taken these pockets from the kit. I've stitched around them to give them just a little bit more stability because I've printed mine on um, not very thick um, paper. Um, and I'm going to try and incorporate these two circles that I took out of um, the kit previously when I was... Um, <clears throat> using the stained glass windows so what I'm kind of looking at is a bit of a um a, a, an effect where we're going to kind of step it across like this um, and that then should give us multiple pocket opportunities um so I'm just trying to work out because it actually looks like the ephemera is in the pocket but they're actually going to be pockets but I'm just wondering <clears throat> I'm so sorry. I'm just wondering if it might be better to do it like this. And ooh, oh, I can't pick anything up today. Maybe step it across like that. And then have that down in there. Don't be afraid to play about when you're um, 
you know, at your building stage because, um, you know, it's got to work, hasn't it? So I'm just thinking we'll have a tuck there, we'll have a tuck there, we'll have a tuck there, oops, and then there'll be one at the back then, which I may want to bring down a bit lower. So let's just check out those positions before we get glue in, because obviously once it's in, it's in. Yeah, so we can still access that pocket there. Right, okay, I think I've got it now. So let's just stick a bit of glue here now so I can see where this needs to go before I move it and forget. <clears throat> there we go. Lovely job. Okay, so that's the first pocket in place. <clears throat> oh my goodness, I'm awful croaky this afternoon. Right. Um, and then I'm going to go with this one then, aren't we? Here. So let's just glue that into place. So hopefully that was high enough there. And then I think we had that one there then. And then that one there. Let's just check that again. a little bit more interesting than my usual pocket layout and again just using what we've got you know it's, it's just trying to sometimes break away from the norm of the things that we do by thinking that we can't use something for whatever reason and we absolutely can because they're junk journals and we can use anything can't we? we can use anything to do anything there's no rules here we go of a different interesting layout and I'm just wondering if we can pop one of our beautiful harps down there I think that'd be quite nice so let's do that um and I want a little bit of fabric behind it oh no we won't use fabric we're going to use lace because that is my fourth element there isn't it? Oh, rather my third element because you haven't seen what I've done with the other and I might actually put the bit of lace across the bottom here oh sorry I've picked the wrong end up now it's all unraveling right I like this, so I think I might pop that down there like that, and then that'll kind of overhang. Yep, loving that. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get that down there now. Bit of glue. Lovely jubbly. And then just make sure it's the right way around. Do you do that? I'm terrible for doing that. Putting lace on the wrong way, and then once I've stuck it, and then look and think, oh, and then I'm going to rip it back off and turn it over. <laughs> it's hard to see sometimes, isn't it? Hard to see where the um, you know the raised bit is. Just tidy that edge up there a bit. There we go. Very nice. And then perhaps we'll put a little bit then behind here. Just letting me see what scrappy bits I've got here. Um, because I do like a bit of lace behind. Um, you know when you're putting embellishments on, it just kind of. Brings it off the page a bit, doesn't it? There we go. Very nice. Yes, let's do that. Oh, and then, oops. Plenty of glue on this, it doesn't come off. dry okay so that's looking a little nearer to where i want to be so um let's do the front and then we'll come back to what we're going to put in our pockets then yeah i'm liking the way this moves this is great and um, i've put my um put my little charms in there I actually found a four leaf clover in my charm box which is a miracle and then we've got our little medal for saint patrick so i'm going to fix that into there because i was going to put an eyelet in then i was like oh this is just going to get in the way um, when I'm moving things. So yeah, change my mind on that. Um, now for the front. So obviously we've got that lovely little bit of lace trim there at the back now. Um, but I would like to incorporate some lace to the front and also use one of these beautiful harp images um, to decorate. So do I go with 
a large harp or it's a smaller harp. Hmm. Now these are quandary. I wonder if we go with the bigger one. What do you think? Yeah, let's just tidy up the way that this is, um, you know, it's been torn out. And then I think if we ink those edges, that would actually look quite good. Um, I think a bit of music paper behind it might finish it off. Uh, let me see what I've got on my desk. What have I got here? Bunk. Bunk. Sorry, guys. So there was something here earlier with um, with funnel. What have I done with it? for losing stuff. I can't even lose things on my, my desk. No, nope, that's not it. Well, that might come in useful. I don't know, we'll see. Keep that. Oh, there it is. Ha ha. Gotcha. Right. So maybe we can utilise that. Utilise that. Um, and then we can pop that over the top. Except it needs to go at that angle because obviously the harp is meant to be, which means I need to take that corner off there so that it's not so harsh. All my nails started breaking uh, last week. But I honestly don't know what on earth possessed me to cut them so short. <laughs> I literally have got nothing to work with. I think I just got, if you're getting on my because I know I was biting them in because they kept on catching on things. But oh, how can you crack with no nails? I don't know. I mean, I don't keep them long, but no nails is not good. Right, let's just ink that. Okay. I'm thinking we need a bit of stitching, don't we, on these uh, elements. Let's, um, you notice I've picked my heart will go on, Celine Dion. Any, any bells? Film, Titanic. From Belfast. See? You know, it's all tying in. It's all tying in. So, I think I actually had this in some ephemera at, uh, at Christmas time from Monday. Oh. Coming in handy now, look. Because I don't think I have anything here with Irish music on. So I was like, oh, what can I use? And then I saw that and I was like, oh my gosh. I remember that film. I remember watching that film in the pictures, actually. It was like something before its time then, you know. It was incredibly long as well, wasn't it? But um, it was just huge, huge thing about it. I can't remember at the time what was so relevant that everybody had to go and watch or whether it was just the story as it was you know but uh, yeah I can remember even my gran went to watch it with my parents and, and of course the song that I no doubt was probably at number one for many many weeks um, as many of these big movie uh, theme tunes tend to, to be back, back in the day as my kids say I love that expression back in the day like, you know, it was so long ago. <laughs> it really wasn't, was it? 97, I think, that film came out, because I know I just left school. Um, right, okay. So if we kind of get that there, I'd like to have that word there, the Irish, that's nice. And then maybe we can put our harp here. Yeah. Liking that. Definitely need some stitching around this ephem ephemera ephemera even um and i need some lace I need some lace on here so what have we got can i perhaps put a bit of this behind there again and and wad that out with that maybe maybe because i don't want it to be too you know what's the word i'm looking for well whatever the word is i don't want it to be too that you know maybe there perhaps we've Bit of that showing a bit of that showing a bit of that showing yeah i quite like that kind of a, arrangement there but we definitely need um some stitching on these things here 
Um, and then I want to sort of include, if I could, but I don't think I have room to put my, my blessing on there unless I put that on the front. We could do, I suppose. If we could put that there then, like that. Yeah, that might work. Right, I'm going to go stitch. I'll be straight back. Okay, so I've stitched all around my um, edges now, different types of stitching. Um, I'm just having to play about now to see how it's going to fix onto the front and if I've got enough on it, because I really wanted the front cover of this notebook to be quite um, quite layered, you know, quite, um, you know, lots on there. I didn't want it to be sparse um, and to kind of just incorporate everything that it might look, but is meant to be about. So I'm just having a quick check th through now what I've got here that's left over from the kit ephemera. Sorry, excuse the arms. Um, because I did see ah right. I wonder if these will be the right size or if they might be a bit too tiny. No, I think that might work. Right, let's take one of these a second. Um, because I don't know about you, but I do like to lay everything out first before I commit it to glue. Um, because once it's down, it's down, isn't it? And I know you can always take it off and replace it, but it's just easier to just check it all out first. I'm just wondering if that might go on there. Mm, I don't know. I don't know about that. Perhaps I'll leave that. Um, so I've got here, I've, I've printed off, I found some different images on the internet um, with Irish blessings on. <clears throat> Obviously, because the word that we're using is blessings. Um, and I picked that because the one thing that kind of stuck in my mind when I visited Ireland is that you tend to see lots of things with their Irish blessings on. Now, they seem to be traditionally by uh, saying very optimistic as a um, as a country and as a people. And they, they, they do. And you're always wishing well on each other. And, um, you know, that comes across in a lot of their... Their, their sayings and their, their, their blessings. So they have these like, um, well, there's a couple that tend to resonate. Um, if you look them up on the internet, you'll find them. Um, but yeah, you know, just like little affirmations, I think. But I really wanted to kind of incorporate that onto my notebook. So I'm going to just cut this lace to size, I think, lay that down, and then we'll pop these bits into the middle. And I think then we will be done. And I'm fairly certain I'll have managed to incorporate all of the necessary bits that were required of me um, into my notebook. So let's just pop a bit of this down there. Um, cause you, let's be honest, you never have too much lace on anything, can you? You know. And I do sometimes err on the side of course. I'm not ambitious enough sometimes, I think, when it comes to layering. I tend to just, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but I'm always afraid to kind of go too much over the top. But but I don't think that that's a word that really is something we should ever be worried about over the top. It's just more layers. You can't have enough layers, really, can you? So <clears throat> we're going to give it a try today. And we'll see how it goes. But I think it'll look lovely. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to just pop that little clutch of lace up there. Again, just to give it a bit more of a dimensional effect. I want it to kind of, you know, really leap out. Um, and I just love this kind of messy lace look, you know. These, this is just some scraps that I had left from the project, but I didn't mind the fact that they were a bit creased because I wanted them to go onto the, the page like that, you know. So I'm thinking... Oh, gosh, my shoulders are hurting so much. <laughs> I'm thinking... i tell you what I need on this. Bear with. Bear with. It's too clean. Does that make sense? When I think about us doing stuff with Irish heritage, you know, it's, it needs to be, it needs to feel old, doesn't it? Oh, I've got lovely speckled fingers now. Please excuse my speckled fingers. <sighs> Sit there and dry them out. Right, let's stick this one down. And I think that will just give off the message a bit better that I'm trying to. Uh, the theme, you know, all of the ephemera that uh, Rose did with her kit was, you know, quite vintagey and, and um, historical. So I don't want them to look too like they've just come out of my printer. <laughs> Does that make sense? I want it, the, the distressed look, that's what I'm trying to say. 
So yeah, let's, let's get that on there. Great. Ordinarily, I would wait for this to dry a little longer, but I'm kind of pushed for time. So I don't want you all sitting there waiting while I do that. And I know if I get my little heat gun out, I'm just gonna blow all the paper over on my desk. So I'll just suck it up and get a bit glittery instead. There's far worse things that could happen, isn't there, when you're crafting than getting a bit glittery. Um, I think I had that there like that, didn't I? I don't want too close to the edge, but just to be able to see some bits of it. And then I think we had our lace coming down here then. Yep. There we go. Again, with that bit of a messy layer effect. Oh, I'm loving that lace. To try and work out where I got that from. Because uh, I quite like the way that that's gone on there. Um, and then we want our harp here maybe. And then put the blessing there. Or we could put the blessing there. Or actually, maybe, maybe, wait a minute. We could put the harp there so we can see those beautiful flowers. And then we put the blessing there. Yeah, that actually kind of works a bit better, I think. I wasn't quite happy with it the other way that it was. It might look totally different to you guys looking for it from it above. Um, your aspect is obviously different to mine. And you know, lots of crafters do actually like to stand up and look over their work, don't they, when they're layering things up, just to get a better aspect of it. But I'm not going to do that today. <laughs> I'm going to stay where I am seated. And hope that it looks just as grand from above as it does from where I'm sitting here. There we go. And then, this is curled up a bit because I blasted it earlier with some lovely um, what distress spray. I've used this distress spray here. Brushed pewter because I thought, yeah, I'm thinking old Irish. I'm thinking, you know, pewter. That's quite, you know, yeah, definitely. And then the gold one I used was the antique bronze. I'm nearly out of that. Actually. I love this stuff. It's amazing. Once you've discovered distress sprays, I think it's very hard to then do stuff without it, isn't it? <laughs> I just love the sparkle and the shine. Yeah, definitely. Oh, I'm quite pleased with this cover, actually. I wasn't quite sure where this was going to go today. You know, I was like thinking about it last night and I was like, oh, I don't quite know what to do. And I thought, you know what, let's just do it. Let's just go for it. I'm sure it will come to me. I'm going to just line that up there in line with the side of that harp. There we go. I hope that's straight now. Is that straight? Yeah, that's straight. There we are. My gosh, that feels really heavy now all of a sudden. But that's good. Oh, I like that. I like that very much. It feels more, you know, substantial now. More notebooky, doesn't it? Yes. Just cut that off there. Because that's getting on my nerves. Okay, so we've got our little dangle there with our clover and St. Patrick himself. And then we've got our blessing and our lace and our harp all incorporated onto the front of the notebook. We open it up inside. We've then got our two little notebook signatures. Really like this. I think I'll be doing this again, this way of uh, affixing the pages because um, it just gives you so much freedom about what you want to do with it then. And then in the back then, I'm just going to put some of these little blessings that I uh, printed out. I'm going to pop those into my pockets. Um, and then that then will fill up our little pouches. So we've got a nice notebook then with things to write on in the back. And I mean, you can always take them out and stick them onto the pages if you wanted to. Um, yeah, let's put that one up as well. There we go. Perfect. That all fits lovely in there. And then we've got our harp there with our bit of lace trim. And... Amazing. Let me just see if I can find and grab my signature a minute so you can see how it will go into the journal. Oh, so they don't fall out now because I haven't yet stitched my signatures in. Um, but let's have a quick look at this one here. So, this is the one that I'm still working on. Um, here we go. So, I was thinking if I want to take that bit there and then I can flop that section there like over the top of the page and voila the nice thing about that as well is if you do have a page then to um you know kind of cover it 
it's two in one, isn't it? So you've got your notebook. It's also then done a page for you um, because the whole thing stays decorated. Now you can leave that over the, the you know, the, the, the journal page if you want to. Use it as a notebook then. And then obviously you can turn the page and then you've got your pockets in the back for your ephemera. And you've also got another notebook to work with then. I quite like the way that that, you know, sits there as well to um, drape over. And then if not, you can take it out, work on it any way you like, and um, it contains everything you need. So there we go. That is my challenge completed. Thank you, Rose, ever so much for inviting me to be part of your collaboration. I've had so much fun, and it's been nice actually to just be directed by um, somebody else's creativity, which is quite nice, because obviously we organise our collaborations, and uh, lots of thinking goes on sometimes, and you can wear your creative... Uh, efforts out sometimes so it was, it's been really nice to just have the inspiration come from someone else so thank you for that rose guys don't forget if you haven't yet seen rose's video for today go and check it out um if you are going to post anything for the giveaway don't forget to use the hashtag jj shenanigans um just make sure you check your spellings for that as well otherwise we won't be able to see them um and again if you go back to rose's first video if you were interested in purchasing a kit you will see the code there for that I will be back with you very soon. Our video will be out in the next day or two with the new kit for the collaboration that we're running next month. And we will also be revealing some of the collaborators that we will be working with for that as well. So thank you so much for joining me. Take care, everybody. Have a great St. Patrick's Day and we'll be back with you very soon. Bye now.